Okay, in this video, we're going to work on problems 9 through the 18. So let me just get my paper out so I can look at what I've done. Okay, so reading this first one, I see it in parentheses, it says it is about profit. So the first thing I want to remember is that profit is going to equal total revenue minus total cost, or you can just call it revenue minus cost. Either way, you're fine. The other thing I want to remember, so this is one thing that I need to know. The other thing that you need to know is that your revenue is always going to be price times quantity. Okay, so these are the two key pieces that you want to know before you even begin your problem. So let's um, see what they have for us. It says, some years ago, it was estimated that the, the demand for steel approximately satisfied the equation here. Okay, so that's your price equation. Notice it's a downward sloping demand curve, and it's a linear function. Okay, so so far I have, okay, so under the total revenue category, so far I have price equals 256 minus 50x. So therefore, my revenue is going to be 256x minus 50x squared. Okay, so then under total cost, what have they given me? Okay, so they say the total cost of producing x units of steel was this. Okay, so cost equals 182 plus 56x. The quantity x was me measured in millions of tons, and the price and total cost was measured in millions of dollars. Okay, so millions of tons and millions of dollars. Determine the level of production. So that's one thing. So you've got to find this. That's your A and then the corresponding price. That's your B. So at the end of the problem, they want to know what is X equal and what is price equal. So price is small p. Okay, so let's see if we can get this started. So first thing I'm going to notice is that I want to establish a profit equation, and profit is capital P, and that's going to equal total revenue 256X minus 50X squared. Then I'm going to subtract away cost. Now look what has to happen. I have to distribute this negative to both of those variables, or both of those parts of the equation. So be careful about that. If you feel more comfortable having it be a two-step thing where you use parens and then distribute the negative, that's fine. As long as you're careful, you can do it this way. Okay, so now I want to combine some of my like terms. So I'm going to write this again, and I'm getting... So 256, I'm going to put the negative 50x squared in the lead. And then I have a 256x minus a 56x. So that ends up giving me a positive 250x and then minus 182. Okay, so p prime is negative 100x plus 250. p prime prime equals negative 100, and therefore I know my function is going to maximize, uh, excuse me, not my function, my critical value will maximize uh, the profit. So I know I'm, I'm heading down the right path. Okay, now set your first derivative equal to zero, and when you do that, you can set up 100x equals 250. So therefore, x equals 250 over 100, which is 2.5. So let me just check that. Okay, so I'm going to do some changes here because I've lost my head a little bit. Okay, when I took 256 and subtracted away 56, this should have been 200. So I knew something was amiss. So that's 200. That makes this 200. That makes this 200. Okay, one more change. Just get rid of this. And that makes this 200 divided by 100. So x equals 2. 
but I know that it's millions of tons, so it's two million tons. Okay, so just do your subtraction carefully. Okay, the next thing they still wanna know, so this is your A answer. Now they wanna know your B answer. Remember this, little, this P is little P, so that's price. So go back up to this, and I'm gonna write it out as price because it's hard to tell a capital P from a little P. So price equals 256 minus 50 times the two. So that's 256 minus 100. So it looks like uh, price is gonna be 156, but remember this is in millions. So it's 156 million dollars, okay, uh, per ton. Okay, so that should solve this problem. So notice that I really was careful about defining what profit was. I was very, very careful to make sure that I knew that revenue was not just the price equation, but it's price times quantity. Okay, so that is key. And then as long as you do your subtraction correctly, you should be all set. Okay, let's do the next problem on the next page. Okay, so here is demand, revenue, and profit. And I think I put this on a couple of pages. Yeah, I did. So let me go back. Okay, so um, until recently, hamburgers at the City Sports Arena cost $2 each. The food concessionaire sold an average of 10,000 hamburgers on a game night. When the price was raised to two forty, hamburger sales dropped off to an average of eight thousand per night. All right. So what you have to recognize is that they're having you build a demand equation. So this is info to build demand equation. All right. So let's read the first question. Assuming a linear demand curve. Find the price of a hamburger that will maximize the nightly hamburger revenue. So for this one, they want you to do a couple of things. You have to find the equation price equals, then you're going to need to find the x, and then find the price. Okay, those are the three things I'm doing for part A. So for part A, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my little t-table. Because remember, your demand equations are price equals equations. So this is price, this is x, and I'm going to look at the information they gave me. When the price was $2, I sold 10,000 hamburgers. Uh, when the price was raised to two forty, I then sold 8,000. Okay, so first you're going to figure out your slope. Change in price over change in x. So if I have 2 minus 2.40 over 10,000 minus 8,000, that's going to give me a negative 0 0.40 over 2,000. Okay, when I reduce this, um, I can get it to be 1 over 5 thousand so just check that if you would okay so that's my slope okay remember your equation is modeled after y equals mx plus b but instead of having a y now you have price there okay so so far you have found the slope and that's negative one over five thousand I mean you can use this also but I find it a little bit easier um, to use this form. Okay, so price equals that, put your x down, plus b. Okay, your job now is to find your b. So what will I do? So I'm going to plug in, plug in the easiest ones. That's the uh, 2 and the 10,000, I think. Okay, so price is 2, so 2 equals negative 1 over 500x, 5, 5,000, sorry, x, plus, and then my, oh sorry, take that back, let me go back, and replace my x, so the x I'm going to use with the 2 is 10,000, okay, and then plus b, okay, so what does this get us to be? 
it looks like this can go into this two times. So this is like 2 plus 2 equals B. So my demand equation is going to be price equals my slope, negative 1 over 5,000x plus 4. Okay, so that's my demand equation. How do you get your total revenue? Okay, total revenue is going to be price times quantity, negative 1 over 5,000x squared plus 4x. Okay, so I'm going to make this just revenue. So revenue prime is going to be negative 2 over 5,000x plus 4. Um, I'm going to even go to R prime prime, which is going to be negative 2 over 5,000. Therefore, I know that the critical value I'm getting for x will indeed maximize my revenue. Okay, so I have, I'm up to there. Um, what I want to do next is take my r prime and set it equal to 0. And when I do that, I get a critical value of 10,000. So just check my math because I'm running out of space here. If I have x is 10,000, so x is 10,000 hamburgers, then I know that my price has to equal negative 1 over 5,000 times the 10,000 plus 4. And this multiplication is going to give me price equals negative 2 plus 4. So therefore, price equals $2. OK, so the, the quantity that I want is going to be 10,000 hamburgers. And the price I want is going to be $2. And the demand equation I had to solve for was negative 1 over 5,000x plus 4. OK, so that's the A part. Okay, so what I did was I um, recopied this problem on the next page. So let's see if we can work with that. So I don't need necessarily, necessarily any of this. So let's see if I can write down what I got for this. So I probably need my price equation again. So let's write that down. So price equals negative 1 over 5,000 x plus 4. Okay, so let's read B now. Suppose that the concessionaire has fixed costs of $1,000 per night and the variable cost is $0.60 cents per hamburger. Find the price of a hamburger that will maximize the nightly profit. Okay, so a couple of things. They want us to build a cost equation, but they've given us all the information. So he has fixed costs of $1,000 per night. So, so far, cost equals $1,000 per night. That's a fixed cost, so there's no variable attached to it. And then the variable cost is 0 0.60 times x. That's how you build the um, demand or the cost equation. Okay, here's your fixed cost. That's your y-intercept. Here's your variable cost. That is the slope. Okay, so you want to definitely understand that. So they want to find the price of the hamburger that will maximize the nightly profit. So what else do you have to know? You have to know profit equals revenue minus cost. And you have to remember that revenue equals little p times x. Okay, so we're ready to go. Okay, so profit's going to equal little p times x. So that's going to be one, negative 1 over... 5,000 x squared plus 4x minus costs. Okay, you've got to subtract both terms. Okay, combine like terms. So I'm going to leave my squared term in the front, keeping it in standard form. Then I have a plus 4x and a minus 0.60x. That's a plus 
3.4x and then minus the thousand. So let me just make sure that I'm good there. Yep, I'm good. Okay, so now we're ready to take the first derivative, p prime equals negative 2 over 5,000 x plus 3.4. Go ahead and take the second derivative and make sure that what you're doing will indeed maximize profit. That's going to equal negative 2 over 5,000, so that's good. I know that my, uh, my x that I'm finding as a critical value will indeed maximize profit. Set um, your p prime equal to 0, and when you do that, you should end up with, in the interest of space, when p prime equals 0, x equals 8,500. So just check that, make sure that that works. And so now what I want to figure out, that's one of the things they needed. They wanted to know how much, um, well actually they didn't even want that, right? But you have to get that because you're going to now use your price equation. So I'm going to write out price again just so you know that I'm using a price equation and not a profit equation. Negative 1 over 5,000. The x we solved for was um, 8,500. Where is this little spot? Okay, so this is 8500, zero, zero, and then the rest of the price equation is plus 4. Okay, when I do that math, what you should end up with is that price will equal $2.30, and that's a 30, not an 80, so let me just clean that up for you. Okay, $2.30. That will maximize your profit when you consider your cost. Now, does that make intuitive sense? So let's think about this. When you consider your cost, your hamburger sell sales is 80 or 8,500. When you didn't consider the cost, um, your hamburger sales were 10,000. Okay, so when you consider costs, you've got to cover costs, um, so you end up having to make fewer hamburgers to do that. So that makes sense. When you didn't consider costs, your price was just $2. When you do consider costs, your price is going to be set higher. Okay, so that's what's happening when you pull in the costs and you don't just maximize your revenue. Okay, let's go on to the next, next problem. Okay, so here, it's a demand and revenue. So the fact that they tell me it's a demand, I know I'm going to have to build a price equation. An artist is planning to sell signed prints of her latest work. If 50 prints were offered for sale, she can charge $400 each. Okay, I know I'm going to have to start building my demand equation, so I might as well start right now. So this is price, this is quantity. So 50 prints, she's going to charge 400 Okay, however, if she makes more than 50 prints, she must lower the price of all the prints by $5 for each print in excess of the 50. Okay, so what if she makes 51 prints? She has to lower the price to $3.95. So go back and read that again if you need to so that you can see how I got my second pair of, um, my second coordinate pair, my $3.95 and my 51. How many prints should the artist make in order to maximize her revenue? Okay, so a couple of things. You want to maximize revenue. So notice that you have no costs involved. However, you don't have a demand equation yet, so you're going to do that first. Okay, so change in P over change in X equals. So 400 minus 395 is 5, and 50 minus 51 is negative 1. Okay, so your slope is negative 5. Okay, remember, we're really going for this type of linear demand equation, and remember that your y is actually a price in this situation. So, so far, I know that I have a negative 5 for a slope, and I need to figure out what my b is. So in order to do that, pick the easier numbers, and I think the 400 and the 50 are just easier to work with. So 400 equals negative 250 plus B. 
So therefore, B is going to be positive 650. So now I have my demand equation. Remember, your demand equation is a price equals equation. So price equals negative 5x plus 650. Okay, that's your demand equation. That is not your total revenue. Your revenue is always price times quantity. So therefore, our revenue is going to be negative 5x squared plus 650x. And this is the, the uh, feature that many people forget, and then it messes up your results. Okay, so our prime is going to be negative 10x plus 650. So let me go ahead and just take my second derivative, and I know that my critical value will maximize the uh, revenue, so I know I'm good. Okay, set your R prime equal to zero, and when you do that, you should get X equals 65. Okay, so she wants to sell 65 prints. Now let's go back. What's the question? How many prints should the artist make in order to maximize revenue? Done. So the answer is 65 prints. A lot of times they'll ask you what you should set the price at. They didn't ask that, so you don't have to answer that question. Um, a lot of times they will also ask you what is the revenue that's when it's rack maximized, but they didn't ask that either. So you are done at this point saying that your answer is 65 prints. Okay, so the next question is going to bring in taxes, profit, and revenue. Okay, so um, this is going to take us a couple of steps to do this. So first off, the demand equation for monopolist is this. So they're giving you the demand equation. Remember, that's not revenue. That's just price. And the cost function is this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, determine the value of x and the corresponding price that maximizes the profit. Okay, so since I'm only going to do that, I'm going to get rid of all of this. Let me turn off the timer. I'll clean this up, and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so now we have a clean place to work. Okay, determine the value of x and the corresponding price that maximizes the profit. Okay, so, so what is profit equal? Profit equals revenue minus costs. What is revenue equal? Revenue equals price times quantity. So revenue is going to be 200x minus 3x squared minus your cost. Now make sure that you subtract all three terms. And then subtracting a negative is an addition. Okay, so let's clean this up. So I'm going to bring the x squared up here. Um, well, I'm going to bring it up. Let me just not do that. Okay, so I'm going to combine my negative 3x squared and my x squared. That gives me negative 2x squared. So these guys are taken care of. Then I have a 200x minus 8x. So that's positive 192x. And then I have my negative 75. And once again, I found a little error. Okay, this is supposed to be an 8, an 80 rather. So let me do that as an 80 and not as an 8. And when I make that an 80, what happens over here is the 192 becomes a 120. Okay, so always check your work as you go. Okay, so I'm good now. Okay, so I have, this is my profit equation, right, capital P. That's my profit equation, so now let's maximize that by taking the first derivative. So 4x, negative 4x, plus 120. I always check. Good, my, my critical value will indeed maximize profit. And then when I set this equal to 0, when p prime equals 0, x is going to equal what? 30. So x is 30. So they say determine the value of x, so that's one thing, x is 30, what comes next, and the corresponding price. So since I know that price, and I'm going to write it out, equals 200 minus 3 times 30, so that's 200 minus 90, 
so my price should be a hundred and ten dollars okay so that's what I'm getting for the first part let's go and look at the second part so the second part it says suppose that the government imposes a tax on the monopolist of four dollars per unit quantity produced determine the new price that maximizes the profit okay so let's get rid of some things so I'm gonna clean this up okay so what you want to know is that when you have a tax that tax is a cost and if it's four dollars per unit quantity produced they are adding a cost of 4x all right so let's do another profit equation my total revenue has not changed so my total revenue is still 200 hold on one second okay so it's 200 X minus 3x squared okay so that's my total revenue so that's good <coughs> and now I'm going to subtract away my cost so what's my new cost so I'm going to say my new cost with the profit with the um, tax is going to be 75 plus 80x minus x squared plus another 4x okay so I'm going to subtract away all those terms minus 75 minus 80x plus x squared minus 4x so that means that when we are doing our math now and I clean things up I have a slightly different profit equation so let's deal with the x squares like we always do first minus 2x squared I took care of these two then I have um, a 200x minus 80 so that was um, what I had last time but now minus another 4 so 200 minus 84 is going to end up being a positive 116 X and then minus the 75 okay take your first derivative minus 4 X plus 116 take my second derivative just to make sure yep that's gonna max so that's good so now set this equal to zero first derivative equal to zero and what you should be getting is that your X in this situation is 29 and your X had been 30 up here so let me just change this this had been 30 right so this was 30 and my price had been 110 so I copied down the wrong thing so let me do that not having a good morning here okay so that's 110 so that's what I had so now what do I have with the tax well I notice my quantity has gone down by one and if you use your price equation so price equals 200 minus 3 times 29 and so therefore your price is going to be 113 so what happens when the government puts a tax on is the quantity of um, uh, product produced goes down and the price charged the public goes up okay so the tax actually gets uh, put on to the people buying the product okay so the next part is C and that is more going to be more complicated it's beyond what I t tend to have you do at this point but I thought it was a very good problem so we're gonna go through that next okay so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit so that we can focus on just what I'm focusing on for part C okay so we're gonna focus on part C and part C actually has two parts so it says suppose the government imposes a tax of T dollars per unit quantity produced where T is between 0 and 120 okay so this is what the new sorry so this is what the new cost equation is when you consider the tax so they didn't make it four dollars they made it T dollars so that's why they have a different cost function than what we had in part B then it says determine the new value of X that maximizes the monopolist profit as a function of T assuming that the monopolist cuts back production to this level 
express the tax revenues received by the government as a function of t. So actually there's three questions. So here is our first one, here is our second one, and here is our third one. Okay, so let's work on the first part of C. So we're going to maximize profit again. You're not going to get a unique value. You're going to get a value in terms of your T. So first off, I know that my profit is going to equal 200X minus 3X squared. That never changed. Now, minus 75 minus the 80 plus T and then plus X squared. Okay, so check that. That's my new profit equation. So let me clean this up a little bit. So profit as a function of X equals. So I'm going to pull the negative 2X squared in front and then I'm going to have, let's see what we're going to do. So if I have minus 80, so that's 200 x, so I need my little x over here, sorry, and that's 200x minus 80x, so that's plus 120x, and then a minus tx, and then minus 75. Okay, so take your first derivative, and you're getting minus 4x plus 120 minus t. Okay, so set this equal to zero, and notice that I'm gonna do my second derivative. It's still gonna be minus four, so I know I'm gonna maximize profit. So what do I get? I will get instead that x equals 30 minus t over four. So you have your tax in this, and that will let you vary the tax. Okay, so that's part A of this. Okay, so this is the first part. So then why don't I change my color and we'll see if I can do the next little part. Okay, so then it says, assuming that the monopolist cuts back production to this level. Okay, so this is the new level. Express the tax revenues received by the government as a function of tax. Okay, so what will the tax revenue received by the government. So the government will get the following. They will get t times this x, and since your x equals 30 minus t over 4, they will get 30t minus t squared over 4. Okay, so they want to know, okay, so given that, Assuming that the monopolist cuts back production to so this level, express the tax revenue received by the government as a function of T. Okay, so that's what they're going to receive. That's their government tax revenue. Okay, so they, they put a tax on every quantity, and the quantity produced now is also a function of T. Okay, so then the last thing you're going to do, they say finally determine the value of T that will maximize the tax revenue received by the government. Okay, we'll change color again. So you're going to find G prime. So I know what G is, so G prime equals 30 minus 2T over 4. Okay, so G prime equals 30 minus 1 half T. Set that equal to 0, just like you would do um, before. And you will end up getting that T in this situation is going to be $60. Okay, so that means that if the government sets a tax of $60, it will maximize its income from this monopolist. Okay, so I would think that you could do the first part of this no problem. Kind of, you know, you have to clean it up a little bit. You have to recognize what they're giving you. And then the other two pieces, once I've kind of explained it to you, it's not bad. I will not ask you to do something like this, but... Um, you should be able to handle this. And just to show you that you're maximizing profit again here, see how G prime prime is negative one half? So therefore, I do know that it will maximize the uh, profit to the government of charging that tax. And that's the last problem.